and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and the peace of God our Father, and the love of the Divine Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, we acknowledge our sins, so as to prepare ourselves worthily to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. receive adoption. Look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. But tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you want the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, 
but you shall save yourself. Word of the Lord. to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandment, thou shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covert, and whatever other commandments there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does, not, does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. 
Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. I think we are all very familiar with the famous saying of Confucius, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. And of course, I think we're familiar with the cartoon of the three monkeys with their hands over their ears or their eyes and their mouth. Not just one hand, but both hands to make sure that they hear evil and see no evil and speak no evil. That philosophy certainly contributes to what people would consider a peaceful life, but that philosophy is against what we just heard in the readings today. The readings from the Lord and the readings from Ezekiel the prophet. But perhaps Ezekiel's greatest burden as a prophet was the fact that indeed he had eyes to see here to see and ears to hear, and certainly a voice, a voice with which to speak, not in his name, but in the name of God himself. For God had appointed Ezekiel as a sentinel, as the watchman over the house of Israel. Ezekiel wasn't called just to be a guard warding off intruders, but rather his mission was to protect his own people from the evil. Evil that they themselves were doing. He was called to tell the people and to call them out about their infidelity to God, their infidelity to one another and to their wives and spouses, and how they've turned away from the worship of God. Ezekiel was called to tell his own people Get back on track. Believe the sinfulness of your lives and get back on the highway back to God. He had the thankless duty. And God said to him, if you don't do that, if you, in fact, see no evil or hear no evil or speak no evil, you, as my prophet, will be responsible for their deaths. For their death, not only physically, but most importantly, they're spiritual. Say to ourselves, that's a tough job he had. And we forget that you and I are called to the very same duty. For on the day of our baptism, we were all given three very unique offices. The first was a priestly office, all of us have the power of our baptism to offer up prayer and personal sacrifices for the sake of one another. We can even put on ourselves penances and sacrifices for other people in our country, in our world, our church. The priestly office that all of you share by your baptism. We're also given the office of a kingly office, that we are royalty of God. We are God's adopted sons and daughters. Brothers and sisters are all because of our baptism. And the third office that we were given on the day of our baptism is the office of prophet. Not the cartoon version of prophet, talking about something in the future. But rather you and I are called to be the voice of God in the world today. We are called, no matter how old or young we are, to look out and watch out for and help our brothers and sisters, especially those who have fallen off the track a little bit. You and I are called to admonish the ignorant, but also not to be able to be cooperating in the sin of other people. And so we have a sacred duty 
if we see our brothers and sisters doing something that is sinful. And we do so not in the sense of laying down the law or look at me, I'm so superior to you. Because we realize all of us are sinners. All of us need to be called to task once in a while. But we do so, our Lord says, in a certain way. We don't use Facebook. We don't gossip. We don't tell everybody else except the person that needs to be told. First thing we do out of love for that person. In love, we talk to them. And we say, what you're doing is not right. What you're doing is contrary to what God wants you to do. And how difficult that is among friends, but imagine how difficult it is in your own family, which is where we start all the time. It's easy to help and admonish children, but when those children grow up to be adults and they're living sinful lives or involved in sinful activity, do we follow Confucius? Or do we follow Christ? It's easy for us to quickly say to ourselves, they're adults. Mind your own business. You've already done your job. Let them live and let live. And all those very catchy half-truths that we kind of are swayed ourselves and our consciences. But we are prophet people. And we're called to say out to those, you can't live with your future spouse before you're married. You can't practice contraception. You can't have abortions. You can't cheat on your taxes. You can't pretend that you're working or going to school when you're taking a nap all day or out somewhere else. How difficult that is. But the good news is that we don't do it alone. That Christ is here to help us. He gives us the Holy Spirit to say the right words at the right time. Now if you notice, our Lord says, don't nag the person, but in love, admonish them. Whether they accept you or your advice, that's beyond your control. You're not that powerful. We're not that powerful to control people's minds or decisions. But that doesn't make us any less responsible. And so the gospel is always a challenge for us. The gospel is always a difficult moment for us to hear. And it's easy for us to dismiss it. But it still makes us look directly in our face. What are we to do? And how are we to do it? And if we can't do it ourselves, perhaps there's someone in their lives that you know that you can tell them, why don't you talk to and help them understand? And why do we do that? Not because we're busybodies, not because we're nosy, not because we're self-righteous, because we love the person. Because hell is a reality. And if you love somebody, you don't want them to see all of eternity away from God. That's why you take the risk. That's why you make the move. Didn't care about them. Wouldn't say anything at all. And let them live. And let live. For Ezekiel reminds us of our very great responsibility. And our Lord promised to be with us at that moment in that process. The moment has come to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ, people baptized to be prophets, not to be blind, deaf, or silent. And so we stand now to profess our beautiful faith. I believe in one God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not me, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the worlds to come. Amen. For God has been our strength and our refuge in every age, and so we pray for all who are in need. Our church leaders and all who are called to lives of service in imitation of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children who can no longer attend school, that with the help of family, they establish routines that will continue their learning, and that this will be a positive time of growth for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have suffered loss from acts of violence, and for a world free from terror and war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us remember in a special way at this Mass for the people of our parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed from our parish who have gone before us in faith and love, may they receive the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our heart, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of love, help us to heed the voices of those in need. Gather us all together as one and hold us in your love. For we ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Of true prayer and of peace. Graciously grant that through this offering 
we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of this sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of the angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. From the history of faith. and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them 
and to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our beloved patroness, St. Margaret, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us O lord we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ O oh Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacraments, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Next weekend, we will welcome Father Alfonso Kim from the Marino Missions. Father Kim will speak at all the Masses on behalf of the propagation of the faith, and the following week we'll have a second collection for the missions. Next weekend, there will be a second basket by the door of the church to receive your collection on behalf of the shrines in the Holy Land. That collection is normally taken up on Good Friday, as you know, but because of the pandemic has been postponed to next weekend. The offices are closed tomorrow, of course, for Labor Day, but the rosary will be prayed tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. So God has given us very beautiful days to go out and enjoy yourself with the family. Have a wonderful Labor Day. Don't work too hard tomorrow. And have a beautiful Sunday with you and your family. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, pass into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.